Hello, I'm Paul Weston. Now, what became of the three men who drove the tyrannical COVID-19 response in England? And that's Chris Whitty, Patrick Vallance and Jonathan Van Tam. Let's start with Chris Whitty, who was the government's chief medical officer in early 2020, when he said this. It is clear that the risk is very heavily weighted towards older people. Then um, for people who have mild disease, which is the great majority of people, to be clear, most people have a mild or moderate uh, infection. Some of them have something which they hardly notice at all. Uh, How did he mutate from a sensible sounding man to a rampant Covidophile? And does it have anything to do with sitting on the executive board of the WHO as Britain's representative? And of course, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has granted hundreds of millions of dollars to the WHO over the years. And what about the government's chief scientific officer, Patrick Vallance? Now, he now works for the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change. And here's Tony Blair outlining his own particular vision. I think you will get to the stage where it's going to be very hard for people to do a lot of normal life unless they can prove their vaccination status. Yeah. If people, people have got to understand vaccination is going to be, in the end, your route to liberty. And the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change has received multi-million dollar grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And Patrick Vallance, he appears to go from one Gates-funded institution to another. Uh, between 1995 to 2006, uh, he was a professor and then head of medicine at University College London, or UCL, uh, which has received multi-million dollar grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And between 2006 and, two and 2018, Valance was a senior executive of at GlaxoSmithKline, uh, which has received multi-million dollar grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And GlaxoSmithKline partnered with a firm called VIR Biotechnology in 2021 uh, to work on a COVID-19 vaccine. And VIR has received multi-million dollar grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And Patrick Vallance held £600,000 worth of GlaxoSmithKline shares whilst working as the government's chief scientific officer. And in July of 2020, the government actually signed a deal with GlaxoSmithKline to supply a, a COVID vaccine subject to clinical trials and final contract, which fizzled out in the end. Finally, uh, Valance was rebuked by the Office for Statistics Regulation uh, for his use of flagrant worst-case modelling data, which led to the second lockdown in October of 2020. And what of Jonathan Van Tam, England's Deputy Chief Medical Officer? Now, he was a huge supporter of lockdowns and vaccinations, and here he is telling us how we could regain our freedom in 2021. Nobody wants lockdowns and to see the damage they do. But if you want that dream to come true as quickly as it can come true, then you have to take the vaccine when it's offered to you. Low uptake will almost certainly make restrictions last longer. Now, Van Tam has resigned from his government post now and carries out part-time consultancy work for COVID-19 vaccine manufacturer Moderna, which has been granted tens of millions of dollars. Bill Gates has personally invested in it, in it being Moderna. And Van Tam's main new job is as faculty pro-vice-chancellor for medicine and health sciences at the University of Nottingham, uh, which he's held since May 2022. Nottingham University has received multi-million dollar grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now, Van Tam seems to be an odd sort of a cove, uh, not least because he enjoys attending football matches dressed as a nun. But I found myself wondering if he's a bit slow. I mean, after all, how 
stupid was it to publicly take close to six grand from AstraZeneca in 2022, as soon after he was threatening no return to freedom unless we took the COVID vaccine. He is also remarkably trusting in a sort of simple-minded sort of a way. Here he is talking about jabbing his own children based on the say-so of the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, or JCVI. I have two children who are uh, younger than 16 and 17. However, I would be very much in favour, based upon the adjudication of JCVI, if they were 16 or 17, for them to be vaccinated initially with that first dose, as JCVI has said. And the JCVI initially refused to allow children to be jabbed, but quickly manoeuvred itself to the right side or the wrong side of history, uh, depending how you look at it. And did this bizarre about turn have anything to do with the fact that the JCVI is chaired by uh, Wee Len Shim, who it turns out was taking at least 25 grand from Pfizer? Now, I have no doubts at all that Wee Len Shim, uh, who I initially thought to be a diminutive Scottish carpenter, uh, played his part there to a T. And Van Tam was also curiously trusting Re. Uh, June Rain's Medical Health Products Regulatory Agency, or MHRA. I do so because I absolutely trust the judgment of the MHRA on safety and efficacy. But How is it even remotely possible that June Rain, now knighted of course, along with Witty, Valance, Van Tam and Tony Blair uh, for general services to humanity, uh, was able to proudly boast that she had turned the MHRA into an enabler of Big Pharma rather than a national health watchdog whose sole remit was that of protecting the nation's citizens from a rapacious medical industrial complex. And the MHRA has received multi-million dollar grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now, June Rain will retire in the autumn this year, and no one knows where she'll go next. Perhaps she'll follow Ian Hudson, the previous CEO of the MHRA, who stood down in 2019 and now works for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And the revolving door between health regulatory agencies and Big Pharma and Big a philanthro is quite something to behold. Bill Gates is absolutely everywhere, isn't he? And let's not forget he was involved in the uh, Event 201 plande uh, pan pandemic planning in October 2019. And let's also not forget uh, the COVID pandemic itself was kick-started by uh, infectious disease modeller of stratospherically incompetent doom Neil Ferguson of Imperial College London, uh, which received a grant of $79 million in March 2020 from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You know, honestly, I'm astonished that the good old BBC or the anti-big capitalist Guardian newspaper, or the once objective Daily Telegraph, are not all over these Bill Gates links to the levers of pandemic power. And I think they should pay more attention, though. Pandemics make a lot of money for vaccine investors, manufacturers, and the assorted fixers who take their shilling along the line. Ergo, some people want another pandemic to pop along at any moment. Uh, one which might indeed really grab our attention this time. You know, we'll have to prepare for the next one. That, you know, I'd say is, uh, will get attention this time. Mm -hmm. If you want to support this channel, I've recently set up a uh, buy me a coffee link, which you can find in the description box below. And uh, if you appreciate these, uh, I would very much appreciate um, having a coffee. And if you're interested, uh, my book um, alongside me here is for sale on Amazon.